Uh, let me, I'm going low on time. I want to tell you one last story, because pretty much uh, other than that story, all I've told you are failures, right? I've just told you about how bad I am at everything and how I can do it. I want to tell you one success story. And that success story started from an email. And I got an email from a, a, a fan, and she, um, she said, uh, uh, she said uh, uh, Professor Levitt, I'm a, I'm a high-priced call girl. Uh, in the city of Chicago, and I understand that you're doing research collecting data on prostitution in the city of Chicago. And uh, I've got a Palm Pilot with all the information on all the clients I've ever served. Is that the kind of data you're hoping to collect? Okay, well, I wrote her back and I said, uh, absolutely, I'd love to have all the data on all your clients and on your Palm Pilot. Okay, and indeed, I was doing a project on prostitution, but that's another story. And, uh, and um, so I ended up meeting this woman for, uh, for brunch, and, um, and she turned out to be a fascinating woman. So she was a high-priced call girl, but she actually was a computer programmer by trade. She'd worked on the Star Wars missile defense system, and she'd been making 80 grand a year, this is you know, 15 years ago, making 80 grand a year uh, working for a Fortune 50 company when she decided that being a prostitute would be a much better career path. And she quit her job, she used her skills to build a web page, and uh, she was uh, making about three to four times as much working 10 hours a week as a prostitute uh, within a few months. And she absolutely could not have been happier uh, that, uh, about the career change she, she made. She was a good example of how quitting can be a good idea sometimes when you're not sure what to do. And uh, she was absolutely ecstatic about what uh, life had brought her as a high-priced call girl. And so uh, we spent you know, 10 minutes at, at our brunch trying to figure out how to anonymize her data and whatnot. And then we uh, had, I don't know, another 45 minutes to kill, and like I said, I'm not that social. I'm not very good in social situations. And I thought, what in the world am I going to talk to a prostitute about for the next uh, 45 minutes? So I just figured uh, I would just bomb her questions, ask her questions about her business, and see if I could learn something along the way and make her do all the talking. So I, I asked her a bunch of questions, and actually, she she's very articulate and, and seemed to like, give me better answers than most of the CEOs that I talked to about how she ran her business. But the one place where, I, where she, she tripped up was pricing. Because it turns out that pricing is just hard to do well for everybody. And she gave me the same terrible answer when I asked her how she said prices as this big restaurant and other people had done. She said, well, I didn't know what to charge. So I kind of looked on the internet and I saw what the other women were charging. Some were charging $500, some were charging $100. So I just kind of picked a number in the middle. And so I, I charged $300 an hour. Okay? And I get infuriated, right, because I'm an economist, and economists think, you know, we know how to price, right? If you took intermediate micro, you know the inverse elasticity rule. If you know the elasticity of demand and your marginal cost, you know how to price, okay? And so, but I thought for a second, I wonder if I could figure it out for her on the spot. And she had told me earlier that she um, had a dedicated phone line that only her clients called her on, okay? So I asked her, how do you feel when that phone rings? She thought about it and she said, well, I, you know, I don't really care that much. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I don't even answer. It just depends on my mood, but I'm pretty much indifferent. I said, my God, you're a local monopolist. You have a downward sloping demand curve. If you were charging the right price, when that phone rang, you would be ecstatic. You can't possibly be profit maximizing. She looked at me totally befuddled. The economics was not her thing. Sex was her thing, not economics. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, look, but then I remembered, look, I'm not here to maximize her profits. I'm just trying to get access to her Palm Pilot. And so, you know, we parted ways and I thought I'd never see her again. Uh, but I, I teach the undergrads at the U of C and one of the courses is the economics of crime. And, uh, and because I was doing this new research on prostitution, I thought I should add a, a lecture about prostitution. But when I sat down to write it, I realized that I like, didn't know very much. And I, after an hour or two of struggling, I had a great idea. Why don't I call my new prostitute friend and have her come down to the university and guest lecture for me? And so I called her on the phone and I said, hey, would you want to come teach my class? She said, oh no, I'm a private person. I'm a terrible public speaker. But look, I, I, I know a lot about econo uh, economists, and I know a lot about prostitutes, and I know that we have one very important thing in, pro in common, which is, look, there's, there's no can't. It's just a matter of price. So an, an economist will do anything for the right price, and so will a prostitute. So I just had to figure out what the right price was. So I said, well, what if I paid you her, your hourly wage? She said, oh, oh, my hourly wage? I misunderstood. Oh, I'd be delighted to come teach your class. Oh, you just tell me when you want me to come down, and, and I'll be there to teach your class. So she came down, I paid for two hours, and she came down and she, and she gave the most amazing lecture you could ever imagine. A third of my students said it was the single best lecture that they attended in their four years at the University of Chicago, which is an incredibly sad statement about what me and my colleagues are doing in the classroom. But I don't disagree, and, and after she did her 
her, her, um, her lecture, we did Q&A, and one of the guys raised his hand, and he said, well, how much did you, do you charge? And she said, well, I charge $400 an hour. Okay, and I become furious, because I know she charges $300 an hour, and, uh, and I told her I'd pay her for two hours of her time, and I thought we had this like, relationship of trust built up and stuff like that, <laughs> but instead she just lies to the students, and it's like, I gotta pay her $800, and it's coming out of my pocket, because it's not like I can actually go to the, the National Science Foundation or something and say, hey, you know, I'm too lazy to teach my classes, so I hired a prostitute to come do it. I need an extra $800. So anyway, I am absolutely fuming at the fact that she's ripping me off, and I have to give her $800, $200 extra, and uh, I'm just like getting red in the face, sitting over there as she takes questions. And the next student raises her hand and says, well, how did you decide how much to charge? And, uh, and, and my call girlfriend, she turns to me with this big beaming smile on her face, and she says, well, you know, the very first time that I was with Professor Levitt. <laughs> she, says, she says, the very first time that I was with Professor Levitt, he convinced me my services were far more valuable than the $300 <laughs> I was currently charging. So I raised my price to $400, and I tell you, it is the best business decision I've ever made. So look, I don't know exactly how whatever I told today is going to make a difference, but uh, look, if a, if a call girl can think differently about the world and uh, increase her profits, there's no reason in the world that you can't go back and start making decisions and thinking differently and being creative and inventive and uh, kicking the butt of everybody around you. So thank you so much for your time. Take care.